Here we go. So what we have is, let's go back and think about linear equations, right? Because as our investigation into our quadratic equations, I'm going to do a lot of relating back to linear equations. So if I was just going to graph a linear equation, all right, and let's say it's going to go something like this. Now, if we were going to keep on graphing, what we would understand, what we would do is, you know, if I kept on picking values for x, either to the negative or the positive, what we notice is there's no restrictions on our range. Right? Because as I keep on going left, this graph it keeps on growing up and up and up. And as I pick values of x to the right, this graph keeps on, this graph keeps on getting lower and lower and lower. So what we can say is, you know, when we look in on our domain and range, there's no restrictions, right? Our domain for this, pro, for this um, equation or function is going to be negative infinity to infinity, as well as our maximum and our minimum for our range is going to be negative infinity to infinity. It's, ne it's never going to stop. As far as we go, this graph is always going to get larger, and it's always going to go smaller down as well. So we don't have any restrictions on our uh, maximum and minimum values for this graph. But now, as we start discovering quadratics, all right, and I'll just kind of draw three quadratics here, what we understand is we're actually going to start having some restrictions on the maximum and the minimum values of a quadratic. So let's pretend I have a quadratic opening downward here. Let's have, I always like drawing this, the standard, um, our parent graph. And then let's do, um, let's do another one down here. All right. So here's kind of three parabolas, which is the shape of the graph of a quadratic. And what you notice is, you remember the arrows tell us you know, where the graph is increasingly unbound. So this graph increases um, up to the positive infinity. And this one also increases the positive infinity. So you can see there's really no restriction on how high this graph is going to go, right? Even as I keep on picking x values to the right and to the left, this graph is just going to keep on growing up and up and up. However, there is a restriction on how low this graph goes. Because if I keep on getting closer and closer over to 0, this graph, the y values, keep on getting smaller and smaller and smaller until finally they reach their lowest point. Then as I start picking x values to the left, the y values start to grow back again. And that's a very, very important feature of a quadratic. And then also what you can notice is for this one is the same case. As I keep on getting, as my x values go to the right, I'm getting lower and lower and lower until I finally reach a lowest point, and then the points start growing back up again. Over here, you can see that now my re restriction, there's no restriction on how low this graph is going to go. As I keep on going to the left, the graph keeps on getting lower and lower. And as I choose x values to the right, the graph keeps on getting lower and lower. But what you notice is, as I'm kind of picking x values to the right, I get up to 0, it's here. And then as I keep on going, it reaches a maximum point, but then starts going down again. Now, what we call these points is the relative min, minimum, and the relative maximum. Because what they are is they're the maximum and the minimum values of each of our quadratic. So, and another just important thing to kind of tie together is you can also see these relative min and max without kind of getting into the axis of symmetry. But you can also notice that these are also, these points, these relative min and max, also go through the symmetrical line of our parabola. So we're going to start tying together axis of symmetry and relative min and max. But I just wanted you to understand, when I'm talking about the relative min and max of a graph, we know that a linear equation has no relative min and max. They go on to infinity and negative infinity. And even though these quadratics look like there's no max to the infinity as going up positive, there is a relative minimum. And if there's no restrictions going down to negative infinity, we have a restriction to its maximum. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your definition for relative min and max of a quadratic. Thanks.